Okay, uh, we're up to page Kuf Yudet, uh, the middle of the chapter in Tachanunim. Tachanunim we have defined as a free gift, a gift that we ask a Kodesh Baruch Hu to intervene and give us something that we didn't necessarily merit. Uh, it's that point when you realize that you've expended all resources, you've given up everything you can, and now we ask Kodesh Baruch Hu in turn to come to us and give us for free because on our own merit, we don't deserve it. A Mepharshim of you, the Mepharshim bring Medrash, a Medrash, which says that Kishala Moshe Marom when Moshe Rabbeinu went up to uh, Har Sinai, and he, in fact, he ascended above to the heavens to receive the Torah. Hereu Hashem Otsros, God showed him these Otsros, these treasures. Amar the Prime Minister Halul Me, who gets these treasures? Who's whose gold is this? Whose silver is this? God responded, Amar Lo Amalei Torah, to the people who engage and toil in Torah. He showed him other treasuries, other mansions. And, you know, it's like you're, you're walking along Lake Michigan and you're seeing one of these, like all the beautiful mansions up in, let's say in Wisconsin, wherever, right? Like Geneva, Lake Geneva or, or Lake Michigan, whatever, along the, all the mansions. So all emotional marom, Hashem Otsros says, who's this mansion? Who's this mansion? This one is the people who study Torah. So the, for the people who do kind acts. And every one, every mansion had another mitzvah, right? Right? And then the Khin Harba is the person who's most nevish for Shabbos. There's the person who's most nevish for for uh, didn't charge ribbis to anyone. There's the person who made who, who found other people jobs. This is the person who whatever it is, okay. And there was a mansion so large. That there was no limit to no beginning, no end. I'm from Zelami. Who does this belong to? Amarlo, Matnas Kinam. This is the mansion of free gifts. Kishal Moshe is Chusa Torah Lo Nastimo. He didn't get in the merit of the Torah. Amar Eni Shoel El Lema Otsar Gadol. I'm I'm just going to ask for the uh, for the for the free gift. The Otsar Gadol. Hado Dixiv Es Kanan. I want a free gift. People say it's better. It's better to bring a snake into your house than a person who has eyes, because if you have big eyes, you're going to want everything you see. In fact, there's an opinion of the Bnei Saskar, Stiel and Melch of Dinov, who was the uh, the he wrote the Bnei Saskar, and he's a um, he also wrote a book called the Derech Pikudecha. Derech Pikudecha is a halachic work. And he rules an interesting din that losach mod, which is means to not to covet, that that includes not just coveting things that uh, that you want and can take. Let's say I covet someone's car and then I go and force him to buy it, sell it to me, right? I make him an offer he can't refuse. That's, everybody says that's losach mod. Some interpret Losach as just not wanting in your heart, which is a tough sell because it's very hard for the Torah to command your emotions. But the Derpi Dech has a, a, a beautiful in between. He says, let's say someone has a nice car and I'm like, oh, I like the car and I go buy the same car for myself. He says, that is Losach Meaning you can't see someone holding a nice phone and say, I'll, I'll buy a phone like that. I want one of those. That would be a violation of, of do not covet. So that's an interesting, an interesting um, uh, theory. But like, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu was basically demonstrating this idea that if you want, that it's better that, that you bring a snake into your house than someone who has eyes, because if they have eyes, they're going to want everything you have. Right. Okay, so the question, right, I was asked to repeat the questions on, 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 the, on the people watching the recording. So, uh, why is it that one would violate this halacha uh, just by merely um, merely seeing, and want, so it, it's that that's because officially Torah says do not covet. Torah doesn't say do not covet and buy. So what the Mefarshim struggle with, and even Ezra is most famous for asking, is how does the Torah command you not to feel certain things? It's like my emotional state. There's a comedian who says like, you know, don't oh, don't be hurt. What do you mean? Don't tell me not to be hurt. I feel hurt. That's my that's my emotional state. I'll feel if I want. So, like, I have a right to feel the way I feel. So the truth is, the Torah is like, Torah says, you don't have a right to feel the way you feel when those feelings are negative, when those feelings are covetous. It's not a healthy emotion. 
And the Torah commands you to get in charge of your thoughts, to work on your thoughts, to work on your feelings, and not to experience all those. And that's the Ibn Ezra. The, the other Mephajim say that's not what the Torah wants to do, and it must be concretized in the form of an action. Great question. Okay. The Torah we have to understand. Lama Otsros Matnas Chinam Gedolim Heim. Why are the treasuries the greatest gift of all? Why is the free gift the greatest gift? So in other words, you have a person who spent their life doing chesed and giving tzedakah. You have another person who spent their life studying Torah. Another person who spent their life being, being, being a great parent, whatever. All these incredible contributions in it, living a Torah life, and none of them match up to the kind of reward you get if you get a free gift. That seems so unjust. That's to understand this medrash. This is a medrash chazal that Moshe went up and saw all the treasuries. And the greatest building, the greatest castle was designated for those who didn't earn a single cent of that, a single square foot of that building. How is that possible? Right, you understand the question? So, every treasury is is a merit. Everything you get in this world is a, a limited treasure a limited set of resources that is designed to bring you to get that Otsar, the next Otsar. How do they translate it here? Um, Otsar is a treasury, right? Treasure house. A house filled with treasure. I'm using it as a mansion, but all right. Um, so so the, every treasure house is limited by the amount of merit needed in order to receive that treasure. So treasure house for those who study Torah, for instance, contains enough for each person according to his amount of effort and exertion in learning Torah. That means that if you, you expend, I don't know, it used to be on role-playing games that you earn a certain level of experience, right? If you play like uh, The Legend of Zelda, those things, so right? everything you do, I assume, I don't know that game because I was a Sega guy, but, but, but a certain number of, experience, uh, of expense, ex expenditures if I put in amount of time, I earn credits. And those credits are rewarded in cash form or in Otsar form in treasury in Shemayim. So if I put in X amount of effort, I'm going to get X amount of reward. And that treasure house is perfectly lines up with the amount of work you put in. That's number one. Now, mm -hmm. and even though you can get an Otsar for many different things, Mikomakom came to upon and molded him since nonetheless we measure um uh modem of his sheer amelo based on a person's um amelos nimsa otsar mugval because it's dependent upon the amount of effort you put in by definition it's going to be finite because you only have a limited amount of time and resources and energy and intelligence and and kohos so i put in you could say I, this person puts in a lot of work into the, into everything they do. It's true, but that's limited because they only have 24 hours in the day and they only have a certain amount of skill and you can't dance the two chasanas, right? So, um, I just learned that. I just learned that for you. Oh, yeah? I don't remember. It's, you, you yeah, yeah. I don't remember it, right. My grandma just did it to me. <laughs> right. You can't dance it. Yeah, that's what you can't dance it too. So, so you're limited. So that limitation limits the reward. That's the normal way of, of the normal conception we have of, of how we see schar to onish, reward and punishment. And when you give a gift to your friend, what, what defines, when I give you a gift, what defines the, the size and the scope of that gift? Is it how much you deserve or is it, I give you free? It's how much I can give you, yeah. right? What can I fit in my car? Yeah. What, what, what can I fit for for my budget? How much time do I have to put into it? If it's a, if it's a craft, I'm building something, right? So that, that limitation is only based on the no saying, the giver, and not based on the recipient. Every other reward we get in Shemayim is dependent upon the, the, the scope and the extent of the efforts of the person who did the mitzvah. The free gift is dependent upon the giver. God's, and therefore, by definition, see where it's going, it's unlimited, because God is unlimited. 
So a chuzah midas tov of yichoso nosin, it should get fimash and nosin, a yoser ashir, the richer you are, yoser tov, ein kach ayin, ayin, you have a bigger eye, being more generous, kach matana so meruba yoser mechashuva yoser. The wealthier you are, the more gracious you are, generous you are, the bigger the gift. Memela muvan to ozumat naskinam, shashemisbach, and therefore the free gift from God, so there's no limit, there's no understanding his his largeness. There is no limit, there's no limitation, there's no way to confine that gift. Yes, you had a question, Karen. Okay. Now understand in depth. This is the bottom of page 208. The fact that there is no limit to this sort of chinun, this sort of matana. Eno rockling in rove hashpa shenosen akarit bacho kasher nosen beged chinun. It's not just because of the influence we call hashpa shefa. Shefa means the influence from shamayim down to earth. Not just because of the influence of Hashem through chinun. Hainu shikoach midat Zu latet afilu kizhezechin al mash, even if it's free. I know below shum reach zafut or below siba koshi she roy lekav mechokha. It's not just based on merit. Sometimes you get a gift for no reason at all. Think about parenting little children. What have they earned? Nothing. They're they're absolutely useless in terms of the give and take of society. Right? Children are 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 zero contributing factor to the betterment of society. But we're investing in something. But other than that, they're worthless, <laughs> right? And they usually don't have proper gratitude. And when you invest in a business partner, you get them a nice gift for the holidays. This will hopefully land you a, a deal. It will hopefully land a client. There's nothing you're getting out of giving to a small child, right? Other than augmented net vision, loss of sleep. And maybe you, maybe you find it cute, so you smile. That's just God's little gift. But sometimes children aren't cute when they're fetchy and angry, right? Yeah. Right. Well, it's love or an investment. Yeah. The future, but maybe not. I don't know, but he doesn't need, but God doesn't need us. Yeah, it's not investment. We invest in children because maybe one day down the line, when we're old, they'll take care of us. Maybe. Unless they're, unless they're, unless their wife brings them away. Yeah, just for the of your family and your and your people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Right, but you invest for for a greater idea of society of continuing the human experiment, one more generation. Yeah. Right. We invest in all of that. Yeah. That's for sure. Um. So okay, but Hainu below Shumre, but some, but but for God to give, there's no reason. Just because. Even if you have many reasons not to give them, sometimes there's many reasons to be vengeful or spiteful or why should I do for that person? What have they done for me? Why should I invite them to my simcha? They didn't invite me, right? Or that person is just a mean person or a sinful person. And even if there are so many sins without limit, right? That's the famous joke. Guy goes to the rabbi and says, uh, Rabbi, uh, I, I've tried to perform every Avera in the Torah. Uh, I, I made a list of everything I've done. I want to make sure I have it all. Can you please check the list for me and see if I've done all of them? So the rabbi looks over in disgust. And he turns back to the man and he says, There's one you left out. What is it? You're not allowed to kill yourself. Oh my God. And even though a person did all of those Averos, he receives a treasury of free gifts. know there are many conditions which to receive those gifts. Not, and not for everyone. Even this Otsar has a gate, has an upper limit, has a boundary. The shar zeh mafteach pateach so, and that gate has a key. Mavur kan mafteach l'toch otzeh zeh shochinun utfil v'atchina. And how do you open up the the 
the gates to the treasury that is apparently limitless, that's through Tfila and Tachanun. Tchina? Tchina? It's a Chinun. Chinun. Oh, Tfila and Tachanun. Chinun is part of the, is from the short Tachanun. Chinun, et Chanan, Tachanun. Beseeching God for a free gift. So the house of Kimun is the house right. that has everything. Right. Right. right, right, But it's the way you were saying before, when we think like we don't deserve anything, and that's one of the everything is perceived as a free gift. Everything is. It's perceived as a free gift. Right. So, so if you take, if you take it, so the question was that everything we're looking at in our lives is really a free gift. The fact that we have a heartbeat, the fact that we're breathing, the fact that we get up in the morning, we can walk. All of that is a free gift because we don't really deserve. Right? There's no, it's hard to say there's a quid pro quo with God for life or anything for that matter. He doesn't owe us anything. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. If you boil down everything in life, it, it ultimately is a gift. So that's a good, that's a good perspective. That's actually why this is such a powerful mode of, of expression, of prayer. Because it, 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 it suggests that everything we do have is, is a gift. Absolutely. It's a good point. There are two elements here. One is that Tachanun is an expression of prayer and a to ask for something free. It's also a halachic element of prayer that when we daven, it says in Pirkei Avos, when you daven, you have to set aside some of your prayer has to be Tachanunim. Don't just read all, rattle off the words that are in the Siddur but also say, set aside moments of prayer that are what we call tachanunim. Tachanunim means that part of your prayer has to be unscripted. Unscripted tachanunim. Unscripted beseeching God for the free gifts that you need in your life. Shulchan Aruch codifies this as well. Yis palel derech tachanunim. One should daven through tachanunim. We're on page 210, I think, right? One should daven through tachanunim. And what does that mean? Like the poor person who stands at the doorway. When you understand you don't really have any merit, like you were saying, that you don't have any individual zechuyot that to, to, to rest upon, then Elohu Ani Rash, and really the poor person who has nothing before God. Then at that moment, I'm not going to have the audacity to say to God, well, I did this for you. Where are you for me? Or I have this. Zuchus. You have to sacrifice a lot to be able to claim to God that you deserve something. Just the abundant mercy of God and the goodness of God, the goodness of out of God's desire to give to us. We open up the treasury of of pain of favor of kindness yes the treasury that's bigger than any other house and this is the beauty and the splendor of what tefillah is all about middle of page 210 this is actually an obvious point this is actually a real obvious idea that if you were to come through the merit of good deeds if you really have it, if you really analyze it, man doesn't amount to much. Our good deeds are nothing in the grand scheme of things. They're vapor, they're emptiness, hevel. But if you say, don't do it because of us, we say, we don't say that in the Slichot. We don't say do for us. We say do for you. Do for your name. Do for your, your reputation. It's about chesed. Don't do it for us, God. Do it for you. That's what we ask. Because you are merciful. Because you, you're compassionate. Oh, at that point, right? Truthful taina. And I'll let you There's no response to that. At that point, it doesn't make sense. That there won't be a, re- a response from God. Because if I say, do it for me, there's a limit. The treasury is limited. If I say, God, I, I spent half my day doing for you, working, giving tzedakah, 
When they asked me for a pledge in the school, I gave it. When they asked me to uh, volunteer my time for the, you know, in, in this organization, I did it. When I was asked to uh, pitch in for my neighbor, when I, when I, when you said study time for to study Torah, I set aside a couple of minutes a day for Torah. I said the Kriya Shema Lamita, right? What else did you? So then I'm basically saying that what I deserve is in, is fitting with what I've done. I'm saying to God, give to me because I did this. That's a really weak prayer. But if you say give to me because you are the Baal Chesed, because you are limitless in your capacity, then the treasury that awaits me is also limitless because I'm tapping into the treasury that is aligned with the Baal Hanotin, the one who gives, and not the recipient's merit. There's nothing that can limit him. What that is, is that I can encounter God three times a day. Not just because I'm obligated three times a day, put on my checklist done, chakras done, mincha done, myrif done. Those are the people who wait at the door for, for uh, myrif to finish. And they get aggravated when there's a, another barco in the end or a bartor in the end because they're, they're, they're an EBLC sign. I did the minion, I, I'm done. However, I have to approach prayer to beseech God for all the things that I am missing, the things I don't deserve, the things I have no right to ask for, like an ani, like a poor person standing at your door. I'm not, I'm not saying I deserve this. Not the mitzvahs, the merits. I will rock, I'll rove to rove a But rather because of the abundant goodness and kindness of Hashem. How wondrous is this very medrash? God yells at Moshe, says, How could you reveal my secret to the world, Moshe? How could you reveal the secret? It's as if someone is saying, if you take this key from me, there's no rules anymore. You could take everything that I have to offer because once you tell the world the secret to riches, right? It's like these, um, these uh, clickbait ads that pop up and say, this person discovered the secret to uh, this one, all right? And they, they are the ones who revealed to the world the, you know, the, the economy that was going to collapse in the housing market in 2008. And this is the one who told you that one day uh, there was going to be this thing called cryptocurrency. Click here to find out the next big secret, right? So Moshe Rabbeinu, you revealed my great secret. If everyone listens to you, they'll get everything they want. If they know about Mat Naskinam, if they know that the secret that everything really is free, that nothing really is deserved, then they're not gonna they're gonna stop asking for measured responses. They're just gonna say you're you're kind, you're abundant in your giving. Laman chasdo, because of his kindness, man chastecha, because you are not you're not confined to a box to a certain finite set of, of options. And as a result, if people knew that, there'd be no limit to what a Karish Baruch would give him. Justify. So, okay, the, so this. So, so the, the 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 comment was that that the fact that the fact that that we were accustomed to speaking to God from a place of I deserve this, I do this, but that, that there is an approach to God just to do this for the sake of doing it. That's something that is that is a difficult thing to relate to. That there, but but again, we're all we all reach a point in our lives in which we need a free gift, right? Everyone needs a uh, favor, right? Everyone needs a, a chesed. We all sometimes are in a position where we need someone to step in for us. So that idea is uh, is critical. Um, let's introduce the next language of tefillah. Again, we have chilui is next. After chilui will come of itur, okay? And then itur, uh, 
oh, sorry, Kiloi Amida, Amida, standing, and then after that is Etor, and then after Etor, I believe is the end. That's it. So we have three more Lashon Satsila to go in our studies. Amida, like for well, it Amida means to stand, to right? Amida, literally, it's to stand for God. We'll have to understand what that means. Uh, Vayamod, right? Like Vayamod, and he stood it, and he dove in Pinchas. We have that also. Vayichal Moshe et Nei Hashem Lokav. And Moshe was Vayichal. This is different than Vet Hanan. Moshe was Vayichal. He made an appeal. Right? We have to understand what an appeal is. Appeal is not in the Bronx. It used to be. They made an appeal. They get up for Yisker. The president gets up and says, does anyone want to give? Who will give to the appeal? And then after like a minute, someone goes, Twice times Thai. Twice times Thai, Mr. Schwartz. Someone else goes. Someone else says, ten dollars. Ten dollars. It goes around. This is the Bronx. And then someone goes, ten times Thai. And it goes, ooh, and a hush goes over the crowd because someone just gave $180 and everyone is blown away. And uh, and that was because that person's a doctor. The doctor gave it. At the end of the day when parents, the biggest dream was that Jewish children would either become doctors or lawyers anything short of that was a failure in parenting the failure of, of the path that the children took and nowadays all children go into finance because they don't want to be doctors or lawyers they just want to make money but anyway um chibu, yeah okay. yeah et hanan. that was hanan oh, free favor this is okay. chilu, bayichal. Bayichal. Chiloi is Vechal Moshe Pnei Hashem Lukav Right, Lama Hashem, right? Yechara Pecha, why are you upset? So we're going to understand what that means next time. But to make an appeal is to try to almost to rationalize, to appease, to to. It's almost the opposite of what we said before. Right? This is to make an to make an argument of why you should support my cause. Right? Someone has to make an appeal before their their, their board, someone has to appeal before their colleagues to sell a product. It was a guy who used to live in our community and he, uh, he uh, Ronnie Caesar, and he, he uh, worked for Pepsi back in the day. And I tell you this story. So he, so he one time convinced the Shuls that they should both go, Ortor and Kobe, they should go to Pepsi from Coke. We used to have soda at our kiddish, which saved the Shuls a lot of money because A, Pepsi was cheaper than Coke and B, no one drank Pepsi, so it was incredibly... Uh, Oh, I don't like Coke. Right. I'd rather Pepsi. So, so some people prefer Pepsi. It's a taste thing. But anyway, uh, so he was working for Pepsi back then. And one day he came to me. He said, I'm pitching this plan to make one of our products kosher. I need your help. Uh, kosher. So we sat down at night. We went through all the arguments. And the product was Gatorade. And within a few months, Gatorade is kosher. So I have a hand in Gatorade. Oh, yeah. Appeal. Yeah, yeah. But it's really him. So, That's an appeal. Right. You know, you know, so, but an appeal means you have to convince someone why you should do something. All right, so that we're going to talk about next time when we reconvene. I have a related, unrelated question. Bye, Zahava. Take care.